I dropped something. So I chose to drop the x, didn't I? You could have dropped the natural log. But let's just see what would have happened if I would have dropped the natural log. The x would have stayed on top, and what would I have on bottom? 1 over natural log x, right? That's what I would have. So I would have these two functions, what I'd be looking at. Where does the blue go as x goes to infinity? Where does the blue one go? Let x go to 0. Just the blue. 0. Okay. Now the yellow one. Natural log of 0. Where was that headed? Negative infinity. 1 over negative infinity. Well, fixed over infinity goes where? Zero. So we'd have zero over zero here, wouldn't we? So this would give us zero over zero, which is what we'd need for L'Hopital. The problem is that L'Hopital isn't as easy this way because what's the derivative of the top? One, fine. But derivative of the bottom? Quotient rule. You would have to use quotient rule on that. Whereas in the previous, the way I chose it, the bottom, the derivative was just this piece right here, which was fairly easy. So you can grab either one and do it, but sometimes one is better than the other. I hope you followed what I was just saying. Uh, let's try another one. Limit x goes to... Mm, Okay, let's do it. X goes to zero from the right again. Square root of X times natural log square root of X. What kind of form do we have here? What's the square root of zero? Zero. So this is headed towards zero here. This is headed towards zero. Natural log of zero. That means what's happening is natural log is heading towards zero. Negative infinity. So this is exactly like the previous problem, isn't it? This is like x natural log x. I just changed it to square roots instead. So what should we do? We're getting 0 times negative infinity. So what should we do? Move the square root of x down. OK. So I should write natural log square root of x over 1 over the square root of x. Now, you don't have to check this. But that is going to give you infinity over infinity. It will. You can go straight to L'Hopital at this point. And what is the derivative of natural log of the square root of x? 1 over the square root of x times. So that's the derivative of natural log of junk, right? Good. 1 over 2 times square root of x. And now that's the derivative of the square root of x. All over. Now I need the derivative of the bottom. Now, if I were doing this problem, I would have looked at this as being x to what power? Negative 1 half, right? And then taking the derivative of that. What's the derivative of this? Negative 3, three halves. Everyone see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm going to take that derivative on the bottom and put it on the, uh, underneath over here. But I don't, I, I'm trying to avoid quotient rule, okay? If it's a power of x, just write it as a power of x. 1 over the square root of x is the same as x to the negative 1 half. 
Now, one half comes out, subtract one, get that. So isn't this now one, negative one over two um, x to the three halves? That's this, rewritten. Follow? Questions? Questions, comments, concerns, gripes? Hey, what was that numerator that read up there? What's 1 over root x times 1 over root x? Because you can multiply those across, right? 1 on top and then 2 times what? Kevin, you're multiplying. Just 2x. It's just 2x. So you have on the top limit, x goes to 0 from the right, 1 over 2x. But then the bottom one, can I flip it and bring it up? Come 2x to the 3 halves over negative 1. So I took that blue fraction, flipped it up, and I put the two red ones together. And I think I get some cancellation here. 2s go away. What's x to the 3 halves over x? x to the 1 half. And I had a negative 1 down there, right? So I have an x to the 1 half on top, and I have a negative 1 on bottom, which is basically square root of x over negative 1, which is negative square root of x. Now let x go to 0 now. All that for nothing. Literally nothing. Now, they're not all going to come out to be zero, okay? Um, I'm not going to work this one out. I'm just going to try and help you set it up. What if you had limit x goes to infinity? of x squared e to the negative x squared. Where does x squared go? Infinity? Where does e to the negative x squared go? You gotta be a little careful with that one. Think about this. Isn't this the same as 1 over e to the x squared? Remember, negative exponent means drop it down, doesn't it? So e to the negative x squared really means 1 over e to the x squared. That one is fixed over infinity, isn't it? You get e to the infinity squared. So that actually goes to 0. This goes to 0, and this one goes to infinity. So if I were doing this problem, I would choose to drop the e to the negative x squared down, and it would just be x squared over e to the x squared. See, you wouldn't even need to write 1 over it. Because it already has the negative exponent, you could just drop it to the bottom. So these are the same exact problems. And now you have infinity over infinity, and you can apply L'Hopital. Y'all doing all right? <clears throat> We're almost there. Almost at the finish line here. How about limit? X goes to infinity. Shit. Sorry, that's not what I meant. Yeah, what the hell, let's do it. Uh, X goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over X to the X. I 
I'm going to put a red star next to this one. This is a classic example. Classic meaning like every Cal 1 student should see this problem, I think. And you'll see at the end why it's so important. What is the form we have? What does the base want to become? So when you're looking, when I say base, I'm saying, what does the yellow want to become? One over infinity, right? One over infinity. What's one over infinity want to become? Close to zero, right? So I'm saying this part right here, right? One over infinity wants to become zero, but then add one. What's zero plus one? One. So the base wants to become one, doesn't it? Raised to the what? Infinity. Is one to the infinity in indeterminate form? Yes. The base is like, I want to be one, right? The exponent's saying, I want to make you huge. So who wins? Who wins this battle right here? We're about to find out. Now, we have seen zero over zero. We've seen infinity over infinity. We've seen zero times infinity. We have not faced this yet. And so there's a whole different attack for this one. All right, so here it comes. The first thing you do whenever you see something like one to the infinity, or if you see like infinity to the zero, all the indeterminate forms that we had where there were exponents involved, right? Any of those, here's the first thing you do. You say y equals the limit as x goes to infinity. So what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm creating an equation, and I'm just saying, hey, look, everyone. I would just like to know what y is, okay? Can you just tell me what y is, please, right? Before it was just, what's this limit? Now I'm saying, call it y. But by creating an equation, what do you think it is that I'm going to be able to do? Take the natural log on both sides. So I'm going to take the natural log on both sides. What is that going to allow me to do on the right side? Well, let me do it this way. The natural log, will we call it pass through the limit, meaning that the natural log can go through the limit. Algebraically, it's fine to do that. So I've taken the natural log on both sides, and that allows me to do what now? Take that x and drop it in front of the natural log. Freaking fabulous. Let's see what happens here. I mean, x goes to infinity, x natural log 1 plus 1 over x, and no more power on it. Now let's all kind of take a step back and, and take a breath. What we did before this, before we took our break, right, was I taught you logarithmic differentiation, right? That was how to use logs to take derivatives, right? This is not logarithmic differentiation. This is us trying to figure out a limit and using the property of logs to find the limit. We are not going to come through and draw a squiggly line and take derivatives of both sides. That's not what this is. All we have to do is figure out what that limit on the right is. See, what is this? Do you notice now that we've turned this into a product? Right? That, that's a product, right? So where does that first part of the product go right now? Take the limit. What does x do as x goes to infinity? Goes to infinity. Okay, times. What did we say this was going to in here? What's 1 over infinity? 0 and then plus 1 would be 1, right? So the inside there is trying to go to 1. What's natural log of 1? 0. This whole thing goes to zero. So what do we have? 